In this video, I'm going to show you how to measure angles. Uh, but before we jump into measuring some angles, we need to define some terms. So I have my angle drawn here, and I'm going to give it some arrows right here on the end of each of these sides. These sides are called rays because they go forever in one direction. Where those two rays intersect at this point right here, that is called the vertex of the angle. And in between the two rays where we have an opening, that is our actual angle that we are trying to measure. We're basically trying to figure out how wide that opening is. All right, I'm gonna erase what I just wrote on there and we're gonna give this angle a name. And the way we, we name angles is by points that are on the angles. So let me give it some arrows again. And I'm gonna call this point A, this point B, and this point C. And there are three ways that I can name this angle. I'm always going to include my vertex B in my angle name, and it will always be the middle letter. So first of all, I'm gonna use my angle symbol, and then I'm gonna call this angle A, B, C. That's one name. Angle C, B, A is another name, or I can simply call this angle B. Again, this is all referring to this middle gap between my two rays that I'm trying to figure out what size is that gap. And that angle, angle ABC, is less than the, a 90 degree angle, which means it is an acute angle. And I wanna make sure that I remember that information when I go to measure my angle so that when I get an, an angle measure that that angle measure is reasonable. So the first thing that I'm going to wanna to do when I'm ready to measure this angle is to take my straight edge and extend each of my rays. We do this to make sure that each of the sides of, my, of your angle will actually meet the protractor. Now, I'm not doing this on paper, so you're not going to be able to see what I'm doing, but I'm pretty much just taking a ruler and lining it up with each side of the angle and then using my uh, pencil to extend each ray along the side of the ruler. So we want to make sure that we use a straight edge so that we maintain the exact uh, straight lines or straight edges of our rays. So now that I've extended the sides of each of the rays, I'm ready to go ahead and measure my angle using my protractor here. And the first thing that you're gonna do to, to accomplish that is you will look at this center point right here on your protractor. Now it depends on how your protractor looks, but it usually has two intersecting lines right here and right in the middle. That's the point that we're looking for. Sometimes your protractor will have a hole right there in it. Sometimes this point will be higher up. Sometimes it'll be lower down. But you're looking for this point right here, which is where we want to put the vertex of our angle. So I'm going to move my protractor over until that point is right on the vertex of my angle. Once that point is on the vertex of my angle, then I want to rotate my protractor so that one of the rays is on this zero degree line right here on my protractor. And I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna rotate it until this bottom ray right here is lined up on this zero degree line of my protractor. So let me go ahead and rotate this. When I'm rotating it, I wanna make sure that I keep the vertex on that original point on the protractor. And you'll see that I kept the vertex right here. The vertex is on this point on my protractor. And now this, the ray on the bottom is lined up with the zero degree line. If I had lined up the other ray, this ray right here with that zero degree line, if I kept rotating my, my, my protractor farther, what would have happened? Oh, I'm moving my angle accidentally on here. What would have happened is that my other ray wouldn't have been pointing at my protractor. And I want to make sure that when I'm measuring the angle, I want one of my rays pointing up at the protractor and the other ray uh, on, one, on the zero degree line. So let me return this back to the way I had it just a second ago. And again, I have the point on the vertex one of the rays on the zero degree line, the other ray pointing at my protractor. 
So now I'm ready to carefully look at my protractor to figure out what this angle is. Now, if I remember, I said before that this angle right here that I'm measuring is an acute angle, and an acute angle is less than 90 degrees. So you'll see that my protractor has, all the way along here, it has two numbers on it. In this case, because this is an acute angle, all I care about are the smaller numbers. So I'm looking for which of these smaller numbers is this angle opening up to. Now it is between this 30 right here and the 40 right here. And I'm going to count up from 30 being right here. 31, 32, 33, 34, 35. Looks like it's between 36 and 37. I'm going to call it a 36 degree angle. Now I have zoomed in quite a bit on this protractor because I'm doing this digitally. Obviously you can't zoom in on yours when you're doing this on paper, but you'll just want to make sure that you look very closely at your protractor uh, because these, these markings will be very close together and we want to try to get as accurate a measure as you possibly can. And a common mistake that I see people make is that they don't pay attention to which two numbers your angle is in between. In this case, it's in between the 30 right here, this 30 right here, and the 40 right here. And it's easy to look at this and see this 40 right here and think 41, 42, 43, because we normally count from left to right. We normally read from left to right. So when you see this is over here, you think that this might actually be bigger than this 40 degree line. But remember that these, these numbers here are counting up from the zero degree line right here. So we're actually going in between 30 and in between 40. So now if I were to write this, uh, I would say the measure, this little symbol means measure of angle A, B, C is equal to 36 degrees. And that is an acute measure, which is reasonable for this angle. So let's look at another example. And this angle right here would be called angle C, A, T, angle T, A, C, or just angle A. This time we are measuring a larger angle. Angle C, A, T is obtuse because this is larger than 90 degrees. Again, my first task is to extend each of the rays so that they will make sure to reach all the sides of my protractor. You'll again want to do this with a straight edge to make sure that you have straight rays. Once your edges are extended, we can go ahead and move our protractor in. Again, making sure that one, or that the vertex, in this case it's called A, is on the point in the middle of the protractor, and one of the, your rays, in this case I'm going to make sure that ray AT is lined up with the zero degree line on my protractor. So you can see that point A right here is on this center point on my protractor and my ray is lined up right on the zero degree line and my other ray is pointing at the protractor. Because this is an obtuse angle, we are going to look at the obtuse numbers. So my angle is going right here. It is counting up from, you'll see that it's counting up from zero right here, 10, 20, 30, and so on, all the way up past 120, almost to 130. So it's between 120 and 130. So this line right here is 120. We have 125 right here. And then it looks like it's one more than that. So the measure of angle CAT is equal to 126 degrees, which is an obtuse angle, which is reasonable. So here's another example, and in this example, I have angle X, Y, Z. I could also call this angle Z, Y, X, or I could just call this angle Y. And this angle is definitely an acute angle. It is way less than a 90 degree angle. I want to show you that no matter what I do with this angle, if I rotate it around, if I make it enlarge it, if I shrink it, if I turn it around so it's completely reversed, upside down, backwards, whatever, that blue arc that I've drawn in there, that the space between each side of my angle 
is not changing. So just because you're used to seeing an angle opening up like this towards the right, if you see one like this opening up towards the left, or if you see one completely even upside down, it doesn't make any difference. You're gonna do this, use the same procedure to measure that angle. So just like before, the first thing I wanna do is make sure that I extend each side of my angle so that I know that it will reach the protractor eventually. Make sure you use your straight edge to do that. So then we're ready to take our protractor. Make sure that we line up our vertex Y with the center of the protractor and then rotate the protractor so that one of the rays of my angle is on the zero degree line. Now if you end up like I just did with one of the rays on the zero degree line, but the other ray pointing out somewhere that is not at the protractor, then you just need to keep rotating. Just keep going farther. So I'm gonna continue my rotation, making sure that the point, my vertex Y, stays on the center point and that one of my rays is then pointing at zero and the other ray is pointing up at my protractor. Once you have that accomplished, we're going to start from our zero right here and we're going to count up. So in this case, this is an acute angle. So I'm looking at the smaller numbers and I'm counting up. Here is 10, looks like it's 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, maybe 16 degrees. It's hard to tell if it's between 15 and 16. I'm going to call it 16 degrees. So we would say the measure of angle X, Y, Z is equal to 16 degrees, which is an acute measure, so that is reasonable for my angle.